Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this, and welcome to another Ranty Rider film. In this one, I'm going to be airing one of my pet peeves. I'm an engineer. Much of technology on the whole is a good thing. Not all the time though. For instance, why would I rate a Garmin Zumo 400 above a Garmin Zumo 345 when this one is a lot older than this one? Oh no, it's the Ranty Rider! Run! Now, I am going to be doing a sat-nav review on these sat-navs. Again, I've used them for a long time. But there's some very, very annoying features on the new one that aren't on the old one. This is a proper bike sat-nav. This seems to be a car sat-nav that's been put into a housing to be put onto bikes and in a bike cradle. And so it has a lot of things that are actually wrong with it. Let's have a quick look at some of them before I do the full review, which will be in another film. As these sat navs are built for bike use, I'm also going to be testing them wearing a nice thin summer glove. But because I don't just ride in the summer, I'm also going to be testing them using my autumn, mild winter and spring day gloves. Just so we can check how easy they are to use with gloves. So let's start with a thick glove on the Garmin 400. I'm going to put an address in here. And you can see that the buttons that you press on the screen are quite large. Easy to work with the thick gloves on. Select the postcode, let's just go there. Nice big buttons all the way round. For a fair test on the 345, I'm just going to have to hold it because I haven't secured the, the mount fully. So again, where to? Address. Enter postcode. Yeah, it's small. Go for the same. No. You can see that these very, very small buttons are quite difficult to work in thick gloves. So for the second half, I'll switch to the thin summer glove. So what I've got to do now, um, the one thing that is good about this, it's starting to pre-select stuff for me, so I'll go for the 8, and there we go, A, A. Done, go. Now the next annoying thing that when you're using these sat-navs, the 400 will let you tap on the um, triangle, and save the location as a favourite. You can call it whatever you like. So I'll just call this one I, 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 I. Done. And it's actually under the blue triangle. And if we view the map, <coughs> it's actually saved the location. And here's one I saved earlier, which is just down as number four. I did exactly the same thing on the 345 and even though the location I saved was around here it doesn't display it so if you've got a calf or something a little bit off a route you've planned that you've saved as a favorite it won't be displayed on the 345. So what that means when you're out on a pre-planned route on a sat nav the 345 won't show you all the little favorites you saved while you were riding the route before. So you, you might have a calf that's slightly off the route and you won't see it from where you are. You won't know it's there. What the sh it's, it's amazing how that can't be kept on a newer unit, but it doesn't. You don't see them, a bit unfortunate. You can get a load of tat called Foursquare come up though if you don't set the unit up 
when you first get it and it will show shed loads of stuff blocking the actual view that you have of the route. Let's go and have a look at connecting the sat navs up to a computer. So obviously every once in a while the maps will need to be updated on a sat nav. So what we'll do is connect it up to Garmin Express and see what happens. Flap on the back. <coughs> Plug in the lead. And wait. Now what you'll see here is a little orange logo showing you're connected. What you'll see here is you're not connected. And you'll wait, and you'll wait, and you'll wait. And this will not turn into connected on Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 machines. Reason being, at some point, Garmin did an upgrade. Oh no. Well done. Or at least what they call an upgrade. So we need to reset the module now. And before we connect it, we need to put it into the correct mode that it needs now since Garmin did the upgrade. Quick secret, Garmin don't know about this. I spent three weeks emailing them a few years ago saying why won't my computer connect. They told me use the correct Garmin lead. Try different USB ports. I tried three different leads in seven different ports on three different computers. None of them would connect. But once the unit warms up, there is a little trick. <clears throat> so, go into volume and press and hold on the top right hand corner of the screen. And you have this menu come up. Go into configuration settings, MTP settings, mass storage from the MTP that it was on, change it to mass storage, save and come back out of all that and turn the unit back off again, plug in again. And this time you'll see we've got a grey rather than an orange connected logo. And as if by magic everything started popping up including my antivirus warnings. We go into Garmin Express and you can see that we're connected with a green dot. So that's all it took. This isn't even a Garmin lead, it's a bog standard USB lead that fits. So that's all that you need to do. So if you've got one of these and you've got an orange logo there and it doesn't talk to your computer, change it to the grey one on the MTP settings. I'll also link down below to the website where I found this out. By comparison, the very old is a simple connection in underneath rather than a little rubber bung. And uh, again, connecting up. You can even change the splash screen. This is me at Silverstone, taken by my mate John Reed. There we go, starting to enter USB mode. This can take a little bit of time, depending on how much data you've got in there. And there we go, fully connected up. So, there we have it. A 10 year younger sat nav that is not as good as the older version. Make a sat nav a lot easier to use, especially with gloves on and it'll be a winner, not like this one. Whoops.